In a recent conversation on Patreon with NT Lawyer, the topic revolved around Meghan Markle and her alleged manipulation of public perception and her relationship with Prince Harry. The discussion included Meghan-ass behaviors, such as the conspicuous coat flicking, which some speculate is designed to draw attention to her pregnancy, and broader allegations about the authenticity of her pregnancy, suggesting she used a surrogate. The conversation also touched on the public ass right to know about the legitimacy of the Sussex children within the line of succession. The host expressed skepticism about Megan S. actions, comparing her own pregnancy behavior to Megan S., which she viewed as overly dramatic and unnatural. This led to a broader debate about whether Megan S. public persona is genuine or a constructed facade aimed at gaining public sympathy and attention. Furthermore, the discussion delved into concerns about the safety measures for the Sussex children, noting the absence of car seats in their vehicles, which raised questions about the children as actual existence and safety practices. The host articulated a strong suspicion that Meghan uses these narratives strategically to manipulate Harry in public opinion, reinforcing a narrative of constant threats similar to the one Princess Diana faced, to maintain a particular public image and control over her personal narrative. She was absolutely never pregnant, not with any child of Prince Harry Essie, throughout what I consider to be their entirely fictitious marriage. I firmly believe that no children have ever resided with them, neither in the UK nor across the pond in the USA. In an elaborate facade, they have even gone as far as to employ child actors to portray their supposed offspring in public appearances and media interactions. Specifically, they've enlisted Gavin Gringas to play the role of artificial an invented child, as well as August Brooksbank, son of Princess Eugenie, and Jack Brooksbank, to assume similar parts when needed. Moreover, they have used Hartford Clark, the daughter of Stassi Schroeder Clark, to impersonate Little Betty, another fictive character in this ongoing charade. Despite the rumors and alleged use of a surrogate, I am convinced that they do not have any biological children of their own. In my opinion, the claim that they have children is utterly baseless. These children simply do not exist. This scenario paints a picture of deception that, I believe, is maintained to uphold a certain public image and narrative convenient for their purposes. The public deserves the truth about the invisible children. Harry and Meghan need to face the consequences of their actions, which have opened a Pandora S box of ethical questions surrounding the manipulation of personal narratives by public figures. This scenario transcends simple celebrity gossip and delves into the profound implications of trust, transparency, and the responsibility held by those in the public eye. As Harry and Meghan navigate this tempest, the larger conversation shifts to the cultural and social impact of their actions. The fabrication or concealment of such significant aspects of their lives not only affects their public persona, but also reflects on broader societal values regarding truth and representation. In an age where reality is often distorted through the lens of social media and public relations, the integrity of one as personal narrative becomes a public commodity, traded and speculated upon by audiences worldwide. This raises crucial questions about the role of media in shaping and disseminating these narratives. How does the media decide what is true, and how do they protect or violate the public s trust? The answers to these questions are vital, as they dictate the nature of the information that reaches the public and influences societal norms and expectations. Furthermore, the implications for privacy rights and ethical boundaries in storytelling are immense. If public figures can manipulate personal truths for strategic gain, where do we draw the line between acceptable self-presentation and unethical deception? This is not just about Harry and Meghan, but about setting precedents for accountability and ethical conduct that will affect how all public figures manage their public narratives. In response, there is a growing demand for more rigorous standards in journalistic integrity and public communication. People are calling for clearer guidelines and stronger oversight to manage the ways stories about public figures are told and sold. This involves a more discerning public, equipped with critical thinking and a skeptical eye, demanding higher standards from both media outlets and the figures they cover. As this situation unfolds, it could very well redefine the pact between public figures and the public.
establishing new norms for the authenticity and accountability expected of those who choose to live their lives in the public eye. The outcome of Harry and Meghan S. case could influence future discussions about the ethics of public storytelling and the true cost of personal privacy in the public sphere. Not for one moment. Her lies are never well thought out either. How is she going to explain these children in ten years' time and still no one has seen them? Allegedly, they reattending school somewhere. Or at least one of them is. She's only going to have to come up with more explanations which will only wind up being challenged anyway. Most women refer to the experience of pregnancy and childbirth afterward. Megaho has not ever spoken about hers. Besides, how can they never go out with their children? How is it possible that nobody ever sees any children? I don't think if they had been open about surrogacy and highlighted the issue, no one would have a problem. But the gaslighting that has gone on for five years is beyond ridiculous. The kids could not be in line of succession, but who cares? Megan is such a malignant narcissist, it is unbelievable. It's a ridiculous law. What matters is that Harry must be the father. At this point, I wonder if he is. Maybe Queen Elizabeth II was upset about her nickname. Lilibet going to the child because she had doubts about her being a blood relative? I am hoping there are no children. Imagine two tots having to live with those parents, having to experience their divorce, and then having to spend the rest of their childhood being passed on from mother to school to father, especially across two continents. I have one good but weird thing Megan is responsible for. Does anyone know the story of the idea for Catfish? A known photographer was contacted by a nine-year-old girl. His name is Nev Shulman. The girl had an older sister who also got involved with Nev. A lot of time passed. And he decided to visit her after all the letters and cards during a trip with his cousin and brother, only to find all of the correspondence in a mailbox. He did find the woman who had really been writing, hardly the sexy young woman he thought he had been talking with. She was married, middle-aged, and had two special need sons. Nev was incredibly kind in the face of such deception. Nev spoke to her husband, and it was how he answered the question as to why his wife would do this to a stranger. He said, Have you ever heard the story of why salmon kept dying while we tried using them as an export? They added a catfish to every barrel, and the salmon all lived to make it to their destination. The catfish irritate them so much, it makes the salmon feistier. Megan is a catfish. She got into a barrel with a beautiful, classy, an elegant woman who was shy and reserved and irritated her until, at the walkabout, a future queen faced down that fish and made it a flounder. And the elegant, tall Catherine smiled. Even a casual observer can see that these two are not parents. Nothing of normal human behavior and it is beyond narcissism, a clear and present danger. Nobody who was truly pregnant and had just given birth would wear a white dress on the world as stage, and Megan would have never given up the opportunity to have photos taken on the steps of the hospital. She must have forgotten about having a hysterectomy when she was 28. How dumb does she think we are? Not everybody is as easily manipulated as others seem to be. Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching our video, and I want to know what you think about these issues. Please express your opinion in the comments below. Hope you will always be cheerful and happy. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.